Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's October 2nd, and right now we're looking at the combination of Doppler radar. As you can see, the light precipitation moving into the northwest portions here and driving down across some of western Washington. And this should bring some nice precipitation amounts for a few people. Portland's been trending upwards. We'll take a look at those model runs, kind of convergence zone signature across some of the central southern Puget Sound, the SeaTac area, back into the Cascades. But we should be getting some measurable precip for many areas of western Washington including the Cascade Mountains here. And some of that precip will make it east of the Cascades as well. We'll take a look at these details here coming up as we go through the video today. This is looking at the infrared satellite imagery. And you can see the ridge after the system, the clockwise rotation here anti-cyclonic rotation out here across the Pacific Ocean as this frontal system is moving through now. And we're going to build this ridge for a few days, but we are going to start to turn the storm track back towards the Pacific Northwest. Confidence increasing in a return to some active weather here as we go towards uh, the mid-portion of October coming up. And if you want to record all this crazy weather we get here across Pacific Northwest, click on that link down below to save 10% off. This station stores all the data for you in the cloud. It's all solar powered and wireless. Highly recommend this station. Now we're looking at October, the first day here. You can see 64 degrees for SeaTac, right around average. You know, that's some nice sunshine out there and no measurable precip for now. But that will change today as we get this frontal system rolling through the area. October temperatures. Check it out. National Weather Service Spokane always with the great graphics. Check out the difference between the October 1st highs and the October 31st highs. Big changes as you go through the month of October for our many areas here. Uh, Omac, Euphreda, Wenatchee, Colville, Sandpoint out there. You can see you almost lose 20 degrees on your average daily highs as you go through the month of October. And you can see the overnight lows here cooling off quite nicely here by the time you get towards November 1st as well. This is looking at the composite reflectivity of the Doppler radar, what it may look like today. You can see that frontal system driving down across the area all the way down across western Oregon here, Blue Mountain, some of Idaho getting some measurable precip, then kind of a convergence zone signature across some of the central Puget Sound as we go through tonight, and then the system slides off to the south and east, and we start to build the ridge here across the area and warm us up quite nicely as we go towards the end of the week and the weekend before the storm track returns to Pacific Northwest. So this is looking at last night's European run. You can see Alaska, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. There's an upper level low down across Nevada as we speak. There goes our system diving down through BC see here and bringing that frontal system across the Pacific Northwest and the ridge built in here one more system kind of clipping a BC here as it goes by to the north and scoots off to the east then this upper level ridge sets up over the area nice few days here potentially coming up for much of the Pacific Northwest but as you can see look at the troughing return and the storm track returns here pointed at the Pacific Northwest this is our 144 this is as far out as the European last night's run goes but we're going to look at some more extended forecasts here in a moment this is looking at Seattle, Tacoma. You can see Friday and Saturday. Look at those temperatures. Maybe getting back up into the 70s here before the return of some systems here as we go through the end of the weekend into early next week. Here's the GFS, something similar there as well. And you can see the cool down after that ridge departs. This is Seattle Tacoma International Airport, and you can clearly see the ridge. Look at this, no precipitation for a few days here, and then the return to some potential wetter systems here. As we go through the early portion of next week, some of these models showing some juicy potential here with some of that rainfall, and this is the frontal system that will be moving through today. Uh, GFS for Bellingham as well, similar signal there. You can kind of see the ridge right there also. Portland International Airport, check it out. It's been uptrending here over the last couple of days, actually the last day or so mainly, for some precipitation amounts as we go through the day today. You can see the GFS calling for towards a half an inch for Portland. I know some of the Willamette Valley will definitely take that, but exceptionally dry down across portions of Oregon this year. And then you can see the return of the storm track as we go through next week. Now this is model uh, the run to run here on the GFS. You can see the slow and steady increase here over the last couple of days for Portland. Look at that. Now calling for a about half an inch here in a 24 hour period and then we get the ridge building in and then the return of the storms this is the european kind of still calling for some of that rainfall here for SeaTac, maybe up towards a half an inch or even more this is probably enhanced by the convergence on signature there because if we look at everett just to the north you can see lesser amounts there around three tenths of an inch and olympia to the south you can see 2.5 you know 0.25 or three tenths of an inch there as well so probably enhancing that SeaTac signal a bit here for the convergence zone activity and portland you know the european has been uptrending there as well. Looks like, you know, could get up towards a four tenths, maybe even half an inch of rain in the 24 hour period ending Tuesday morning. 
Seattle Tacoma, this is the European now, and you can clearly see the ridge with the return of the storm tracks. The GFS and the European, pretty good agreement here as we go through the early portion of next week with the return of the storm systems, and this is today's front. This is Boise, that frontal system out there. Of course, across the mountain range, that's not going to bring as much precipitation, but you could get you know a few hundredths of an inch rain, maybe a tenth of an inch out of this system. This is looking at the European as of last night. You can see that precip moving on that we saw on the Doppler radar here, pushing down across the area. You can kind of see a little bit of that convergence zone signature across some of the Cascade Mountains mountains there of Washington system moves down off to the south and east and that weak system kind of clips us as it goes by then we start to drive things out as we head towards Friday and Saturday across the area this is a six to ten day outlook here and you can see through October 11th here above average signal across much of the west and you can see it there. Here comes the return of the storm systems back into the Pacific Northwest above average signal here across much of Washington, Oregon, into Northern California. That would include British Columbia, of course, as well. 8 to 14 days still above average signal here through mid-October, but you can clearly see the above average signal here for the Pacific Northwest on the 8 to 14 day. This is Quileute. Check it out. As these systems return, some of these are showing up pretty blustery here. You can see several ensemble members up over 50 miles per hour, and this one at number 7 actually shows 64, 67 mile per hour gusts. And so I cherry picked that one. We're looking at number seven here, purely fantasy right now. But look at the storm system develop bombs out right off the Pacific Northwest there. And look at that. 962, 958, 962 millibar low right off the Washington coast. That would bring some breezy conditions to the coastal areas for sure. Wouldn't be too big of a windstorm for the, some of the interior portions, but would be quite the dynamic storm right off the coastline here, bringing some nice precipitation amounts with it as well. And you can see that fill and move up towards southeast Alaska there. Now, SeaTac also shows a couple members here with 50 mile per hour gusts and some blustery conditions. Just purely a fantasy windstorm forecast at this point, but I wouldn't go ahead and I went ahead and cherry picked number 12 here, and you can see the system off to the bottom left there. If I put that into motion, you can see it develop and move towards the coastline. This would bring windier conditions for Seattle. Pretty dynamic storm system there. It would be filling as it made impact, but you can see a kind of a strong pressure rise as the system moves up into British Columbia there. Purely fantasy stuff right now, just entertainment purposes only. This is looking at total precipitation in inches on the European the left, GFS on the right. This is yesterday afternoon's run. This goes out a little ways. You can see that initial system roll across the area here, getting some nice amounts for the Cascades especially. And then as we scroll on in through the weekend, you'll notice that storm tracks start to return as we get on into Monday. And you can see the increase in precipitation amounts here on the European on the left again, on the GFS on the right. But yeah, you can see we're going back into mid-October here and we're going to start bringing some systems. It looks like confidence is increasing in that. Now, the only caution is that things can change right now, and these can definitely downtrend and be much weaker, or we could even get stronger systems in here at this point. It's that time of year where we start to ratchet things up a bit here with these mid-latitude cyclones, but we still need to be careful with just how we forecast that so far in advance. This is looking at the drought monitor. You can see we still have some extreme and severe drought. It'll be interesting to see what kind of downgrade occurs with this as we did get a nice bout of precipitation here over the last several days at the end of September there. They also have a nice discussion in the drought monitor as well. And you can kind of see they talk about uh, the West here. And they mentioned that Washington, uh, three-fourths or more of the topsoil moisture was short or very short in Washington, about 82%. So they give good information in there as well. Oregon's been exceptionally dry also here. So you can kind of see what they're thinking behind the drought monitor. Uh, and El Nino actually dipped down a little bit here. This may just be a, you know, a, a Kelvin wave. Uh, you, know, it, you get alternate uh, Kelvin waves, warm and cooler ones moving through the area. So we'll see how this trends but you can kind of see that in the cfs forecast down here as well let me scroll down sorry i hope i'm not making you sick but anyway you can kind of see we hover right around the moderate territory here according to the cfs so yeah I mean, maybe we'll just stay in a moderate el nino here we're getting closer to being in a strong but it's going to be close but anyway still el nino conditions dominate across uh, the central pacific ocean as of right now but, but anyway yeah here's our system you can clearly see the ridge that's going to build in here and then we're going to ratchet things up and start to bring the storms back in the pacific northwest confidence increasing that we'll continue to watch the storms over the next few days hope you guys are liking these videos click like subscribe and i will talk to you guys tomorrow